Bonjour! Well, today we're going to dive into Claude Monet's paradise. It's a beautiful place that he built for himself. So it's his house and his garden. We're going to talk about his family life in this place, his art collection and his friendships with other artists to paint a more vivid picture of his wonderful world. Monet was born in Paris in the year of 1840. And he came from a family that uh, was modest. But he was pretty lucky because his family did support his passion for art from a very young age. He grew up uh, in Normandy, in a town by the coast, and this quietly influenced him on his style. As Monet's uh, artistic talent bl blossomed, he faced both financial challenges and criticism at his home, we can find uh, family pictures and his art collection. He had a keen eye for beauty and innovation, and his collection of artwork not only adorned the walls of his house, but also served as a source of inspiration. He collected paintings from his friends, like you will find Renoir and Edouard Manet paintings and other artists as well. It's really nice because you can feel that there was camaraderie between the, the artists. You can also see Monet's interest in the Japanese art. The influence of Japanese art on Monet's work can be seen in his compositions, his use of color, and the depiction of nature. He was captivated by the simplicity and the harmony, the vibrant colors found in Japanese uh, prints and you can see a collection at his home. <laughs> he was able to overcome all the obstacles and he became the pioneer of the Impressionist movement. Claude Monet lived for 43 years in this house that I'm showing you from the year of 1883 to 1926 in the town of Giverny in Normandy. The charming house that Monet created, uh, that was his century. And within these walls, the creative genius found Solash and his artistic vision blossomed like the flowers in his garden. No, 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 no. His family life also blossomed. It flourished within these walls he, with his beloved wife, Camille, and their children. They filled the house with laughter, music, and warmth creating a harmonious atmosphere that nurtures Monet's artistic spirit. Right now we are in Monet's bedroom. We can see his original bed and all the furniture that it's around, it's original. It had a chimney, large windows to allow the natural light to come in, and paintings everywhere from his friends and from himself reflecting the artistic exchange that defined the Impressionist movement. Imagine every morning walking toward your window and looking at this garden. I think that he thought that he was really in paradise. Legend has it that uh, Monet and his artist friends will often gather at Giverny to discuss about art to exchange ideas and embark on painting expeditions in the picturesque countryside that surrounded uh, his garden. They would challenge each other to push the boundaries of their creativity, experiment with new techniques, and celebrate the beauty of nature in all its forms, which I think that is not difficult when you're in a place like this. You feel like Nature, it's made by God and it's perfection. So their friendship was not just a bond of shared passion, but a testament to the power of collaboration and mutual support in the world of art. We are looking at Germaine Ochedet's wedding picture. She was a stepdaughter of Monet as he married a second time. His first wife, Camille, died from tuberculosis. So he married Alice Oshede. She used to be the previous wife of uh, 
Monet Patron. Alice divorced uh, Ernest Oshede and she brought into Giverny her five children. So they became a big family. He had two sons with Camille, and when he married Alice, she brought her five children, and they had one son. So in the total, there were eight children at the home. He was a generous host, and he welcomed many colleagues, lots of artists, to his table. From Alfred Sisley to Pierre Renoir, you can say by looking at uh, Monet pictures that he was a gourmand, and a gourmet, which means in French, someone that enjoys eating, eating good food, <laughs> good quality, and never misses an opportunity to indulge. So if you're inviting people, you have a very good excuse for the gourmandise. It's interesting to see the dining room all painted yellow, not only the walls, but also the furniture. He liked bold colors, and he will not stop. You can see now the kitchen with the bright and blues and different tonalities. I think that he has inspired not only artists but also interior designers. His home is anything from boring. He shows a lot of colors. He loved colors. He was the master of it. And he doesn't use beige or gray, brown, earthy colors in his home. He really showed his character and his love uh, for life. Even the facade of the house shows pink co color on the walls and the shooters were green on a time where shooters usually were painted gray. Well, to come to Giverny, I really recommend to rent a car. It's one hour and 21 minutes from Paris, so you can do a one day trip the rent go from 80 euros and then they go up. And because you are in Normandy, you can go to the coast, so you will see the beaches. And uh, I would recommend for you to, to stay a little bit longer in Normandy and visit Etretta. It's a gorgeous place and I already published a video on it. I recommend for you to see it. It's two hours away uh, from um, Monet's home by car. By train is really difficult because you have to be changing and you have to get a bus and then you might have to call a taxi from the last station or get an Uber. So it will take you more than three hours. Monet Home and Gardens are open from the end of March till beginning of November. I will suggest for you to go to the foundation monet.com and buy your tickets online. The tickets include the gardens and the house, and an adult will pay 11 euros 50, and a child from seven to 17 will pay seven euros. <laughs> Children under seven are free of charge. The visits start at 9.30 a.m. and they have to finish by 6 p.m but they will allow you to get in the latest at uh, 5 p.m. You can only use it, your ticket the day that uh, you bought it for, otherwise you will lose it. Once you get in, if you have to go out like to the parking lot, you will not be able to get in again. Animals are not allowed. Also not allowed to bring paintings or to start drawing and uh, to do a picnic is forbidden but outside close to to the parking lot there is a green area uh, with a sculpture of uh, Monet and you're able to do your picnic there without any problem. There are also many good restaurants in the town of Giverny and I will suggest for you to when you leave when you finish your visit to go into the town for a walk. There are many beautiful gardens and uh, you will find not too far away at walking distance, the shores of saint Radegonde, And Monet's grave is located behind the shores. It's a 10 minute walk from the house. 
garden. It's pretty famous, maybe one of the most famous gardens in, in France. It's well visited by over 500,000 people per year. He did many of his paintings in this garden, like the famous water lilies that are exhibited in the Museum of La Orangerie, uh, close to the Louvre in Paris. The garden is divided in two sessions. One is the one that looks more like an English garden, full of flowers of different kinds, uh, different colors, and it's located in front of the house. And the water garden, that he started 10 years after his arrival to Giverny. His flower garden is bursting with color. It has thousands and thousands of different kinds of flowers. Uh, you can find from peonies to roses, irises. You can see the flowers dancing <laughs> with the wind in the sunlight. This is really the magical world that Claude Monet created. And it's really captivating. And that's one of the reasons why it's one of the most enchanting and inspiring places in the world. Besides being about uh, art and painting, he was also very passionate about gardening. So he converted his property in Giverny into a living work of art. He planned and also planted every flower, tree, at uh, the pond, he created a very harmonious and visually stunning masterpiece. You're going to be able to see flowers that you never seen before. <laughs> very nice shapes and colors. Some of them, they look like a nightgown. And the contrast of colors is amazing. It's a whimsical garden. You wander through the winding path and uh, lush of flower beds, you realize that you can almost feel the artist's presence, his passion for nature, his search for beauty. It's no wonder that visitors describe the experience of visiting Monet's garden as nothing short of magical. A true feast for the senses. Not only the flowers, but you can also hear the song of the birds. You're in communion with nature. So let the beauty and the tranquility of this enchanting place inspire you, just as it did for the great master himself. You might become an artist in your own way. It's so beautiful to see the different shades of orange in the flowers and the contrast with the green leaves. We are on our way to the water garden. Path that takes you underneath and then you go with the stairs up into the other side of the garden. And we are really ready <laughs> to see. We have high expectations about the pond and the bridges. I invite you to share with your family and friends this wonderful experience. It's not only beautiful, but it's also relaxing, so you can see the video as many times as you like and relax. Give a thumbs up if you like the video, if you enjoy it, uh, it will mean a world to me. And I'll thank you for it. I hope my videos bring some joy into your life. And uh, I just want to show you that France is not only Paris, but there are many places where you can go and visit. Follow me on my next adventures. 
I will keep on showing my love for France. The most iconic features of Monet Garden is the water lily pond. It's immortalizing his famous series of paintings. Monet was so obsessed with his water lilies that he will often wade into the pond to tend to them, much to the amusement of his neighbors. One day, as he was knee deep in the water, a mischievous frog leaped onto his head, causing Monet to burst into laughter and inspiring him to paint a whimsical portrait of the incident. But it wasn't really just the water lilies that captured Monet's imagination. He was very curious and he also had a passion for Japanese inspire elements. By the way, I highly recommend for you to come with uh, comfortable shoes, uh, better if you take tennis shoes, because there is a lot of walking going around the gardens. So you need to, to be comfortable. They do have benches where you can sit and rest. So for elderly people, or if you get tired, you know that you will be able to sit. Here we have one of the Japanese green bridges and everything surrounded by beautiful flowers and the famous pound. It's known that Monet would often sit on the bridge for hours, observing the play of light and shadow on the water below seeking inspiration for his next masterpiece. Leave me in the comments if you have been already at Giverny or if you're planning to visit in France and now you're thinking about going. I don't know if it's true, but there is a legend that says that once he was lost in his thoughts and, and a squirrel came and stole his paintbrush and ran off with it. I would have stole his painting rather than the brush. So he started chasing the squirrel. Now we can see some of the water lilies. Uh, this year there are not many, really, but they do have a very vibrant color. They're beautiful. <clears throat> it makes me remind uh, the walls of L'Orangerie, painted by Monet. We have to thank the Monet Foundation for doing such a great job of keeping the gardens and uh, the home, keeping his legacy alive. And we have a better view of the water lilies. They are all fuchsia. Uh, they did not have any other color. We are walking toward one of his Japanese uh, bridges. They are all green. They are an iconic feature that uh, much of exotic beauty to the already enchanting landscape that surrounds us. Who was deeply influenced by Japanese art and its culture he incorporated these bridges into his garden design uh, to create a sense of harmony and tranquility. Here we can see more water lilies and they have a lighter color. <laughs> a 
And we have a beautiful Japanese maple tree. It provides a beautiful contrast uh, with the green and uh, the deep red. We're walking toward the famous green bridge, the Japanese bridge. Its arch design and vibrant green color uh, serves as a striking focal point in the garden and it offers the visitors a picture perfect view of the water. Famous of the Japanese bridges in Monet Garden is a green wooden bridge. It has a huge wisteria and when it flowers, the perfume that it emanates it's really something. This bridge with its arch design and vibrant green color serves as a striking focal point in the garden and offers visitors a picture perfect view of the water lilies and surrounding foliage. It's also a nice place for you to take pictures of the pond to have a, a view, a panoramic view of the garden. And it's also a beautiful place for somebody to take a picture of you. It's a very nice souvenir that will remind you of the wonderful moments that you had at Giverny. The canoes at the pond in Giverny, they add a touch of nostalgia and we see to the already picturesque settings. Uh, these gardens and the home, the way it had been planned by Monet, it shows us his love for nature and for outdoor activities. He enjoys spending time on the water and often use canoes to explore the ponds and its surroundings. The floor that we're looking at is from the Dracontium family. It spells a strong odor to attract insects. And it's original from South America. Here is a flower that I've known from before. And uh, it flowers only once a year. And uh, she opens at 11 p.m. at night. After that, she closes herself again and she will open back the next year. Canoes at the pond are typically traditional wooden rowboats. They're painted in green and it blends into the nature. We can see them gliding across the water, offering a unique perspective of the water lilies and the weeping willows and the Japanese bridges as well. It's known that Monet, he enjoyed taking his family and also friends on a leisure canoe ride around the pond. So I really hope that you enjoy this trip to Giverny and that if you visit uh, one day Monet's home and garden, you will be able to feel the beauty that inspired one of the greatest artists of all time. Okay, no, it's not too bad. It's not too bad.